Okay, there we go. So I'm going to hang in the chat and take some questions. First of all, let's talk about uh, how to get the lights off of the map, right? The lights from the shell. So just for clarity's sake, right? On the complete shell, there's a light. Let's, where's the complete shell? Here it is. So let's go out of 2D mode. So we can see it's casting light on the ground, right? So that is being rendered into the minimap. Now, there are, I did a little research into this, um, and it's not totally satisfactory, but uh, what you can use is the on pre-render, I'll, I'll post the reference for this, the on pre-render callback uh, for, here, I'll put it on the screen. So monobehavior.onPreRender. Uh, so here, they're doing something with the fog, right? But basically, you will call, it's like uh, an on enable or start callback. On pre-render, you attach this uh, to, if the script is attached to the game object with the camera and it's enabled. And basically, what you can do is turn off all your lights in on pre-render and then turn them back on in on post-render. So this would be attached to the script with the, this would be attached to the minimap camera, uh, turn off all the, turn off any lights for the shells, right? Um, and then turn them back on. That's one way to do it, a script-based way, right? The other thing that I was thinking is and I don't think there is any particular drawback to this that I can think of, is just to create a second copy of your level geometry. And you could probably even do like a simplified copy, right? Like we could take the complete level art, right? And take out all the dunes and all the floor and all that stuff. You know, there's a certain amount of stuff in here that you don't really need for the mini map, right? We could take out the dunes, we could take out these little floor tiles, maybe take out the plants and stuff. Um, just simplify it, right? Uh, and put that on its own layer and then render that in the uh, mini map camera, right? And then for that, we would just set the complete shell. This is another use of layers, right? You can set the culling mask for every light, right? So we would just say, don't cast against the level, only cast against the minimap level. But again, right, it depends on your game, what you wanna do. Another really cheapo solution would just be to add a um, another copy of the floor plane, because that's mostly what you're gonna see it on, and then just take that and render it separately, right? A few different ways to do it, but those are those are my ideas. Um, all right, let me look at the, um, let me look at the chat. Yes, uh, that's another good point. As Piflik points out, uh, lighting layers only prevent light affecting objects, not which camera can see them. You could do something with replacement shaders, though. Replacement shaders would be another direction to go with this. Maybe a little more advanced solution, but another good option. Oh, yeah, GM Liquid Media says, I did something different for the static map. I used an image of the level before the lighting. You could totally do that. You could render an image of your map and stick it on a plane and use that. That's another good option. I mean, there's a lot of ways to do it, right? You could also have, if you wanted like a more hand-drawn map, you could like have a drawing and then stick that on a huge plane that matches one-to-one -one on your level, right? That would be another way to do it. Uh, somebody asking about the audio listener. Yeah, you can think of the audio listener as the microphone on the camera that's moving around the level, right? Or the ears of the player. Uh, Mr. Xgal, what was used for the minimap border? It's just an image. It's just a 2D image. A UI image, not a raw image, but a regular image. Piflik says, the better way to prevent the camera going offline is not making it a child to the player object. It doesn't belong there anyways. Yeah, I hear you. Making it a child to the player was an easy way to do the rotation and the movement without doing scripting because I kind of wanted to do this one with no scripting to keep it beginner friendly and just talk about cameras and stuff. But yeah, 
I, I mean, honestly, the original way I did it was with a follow camera script, and I like that better. But, you know, I think it does make sense teaching wise to do it this way. And also, most games, right, when the player dies, you're not looking at the mini map anyway. So, Blue Catberry asks, I want to ask you something. Can't we put directions like north, south, south, east, and west to the mini map? Yeah, sure. Uh, you totally could. Um, you would probably not want your map to rotate in that case, but you could. Just put them in the image border, mini map border. GM Liquid Media says, part of the reason I did images is so if the player had not seen part of the level, it would not show on the map. Once they've found it, then it activates the image areas. That's cool. I like that approach. Yeah, you could replace it with black or whatever, kind of fog of war effect. That's cool. Uh, the Conbot asks, performance-wise, is it better to use quads, planes, or sprites to render the icons? Um... I think all three of those are very, very similar performance-wise. I think the only, the only thing that might be slightly inefficient about what I'm doing is that we're using some alpha, so there's some transparent overdraw, which I know is a little more expensive than just having a mesh. But honestly, performance-wise, right, just profile it in your game. It's, it's hard to give abstract performance advice. Cool. Yeah, and F5 Chaser says, thanks, Matt. Can't wait to use render textures in my own games, right? Please keep in mind that making a minimap is not the only way to do this, right? You could do it to make TV screens, uh, the old water reflection refraction effects and the old standard assets, which are not super amazing looking at this point. They're kind of dated now, but uh, they use render textures as well, right? They are grabbing... Uh, grabbing a texture and using that for the refraction, refraction, reflection and refraction in that shader. Uh, so you could take the texture from the render texture, right, and process it with a shader. Uh, keep in mind, it's just a texture, right? So you could put it into another shader that does weird stuff and do something really interesting, right? So there's a lot to do with this. We're just kind of scratching the surface. Okay, can you delete a color preset? You know, let's see. Actually, I don't know how to do that. Let's take a look. Um, oh, I just made another one. Create new library. It's probably like alt click or something. Yeah, alt click. See, look at that. Dat UX for the win. Alt click to delete a color preset. Boom, boom, bye, brown. Piflick suggests for the north, south, east, and west thing, you could get the camera's rotation and calculate the compass rotation from that. Yeah, totally. That would be a good idea. Yes, you totally could. Uh, rames 44 BS, could, you could put, or suggests, you could put them in the image border and then have a script that rotated the image the same amount as the current tank rotation, right, to preserve the north, south, east, west uh, true directions. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Great to see you all. Uh, I'll be back in two weeks with our session on working with some of the new 2D tools, which should be fun. Um, 2D session, not very programming heavy, if at all. Um, and yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off mic. I'll keep an eye on the chat and uh, type some answers to some further questions. Um, but thanks again for watching.